What is up, everybody? How are we doing? Uh, another road reflections coming at you from my car. Uh, hope you guys are enjoying these return. The return to the vehicle. I know we there's no special extra graphics or anything like that, and uh, but but you know I think it's still fun uh, to do these the, the, this way. I, I I get to get to have a little fun with that. Um, feeling a lot better. If you caught the last road reflection that I put out, the last full road reflection that I put out, talked about uh, talking about getting a cough, and uh, you know I, it's still there. There's still a little bit uh, remaining. It's not as bad as it was the the other day. Uh, the height of it was Monday when I put out that last full video. It's pretty bad on Monday. I, I woke up coughing and all that kind of shit. Uh, but, uh, got medicine and I, and I didn't, I didn't have, uh, you know, any of the other symptoms, just FYI. Uh, I know anytime that somebody gets sick or is mildly sniffly or has to use a tissue these days, everybody's like, holy shit, is it COVID? Are you dying? Is this a thing? Is this over? Are you, is, do I need to be quarantined for two weeks? What's up? Uh, it's not, it's just, it's allergies. This is, this is sort of, uh, the natural pace of what happens, uh, around this time of year. Usually I'm not in the city of Pittsburgh, uh, around this time of year. I'm usually touring around in a, in a different part of the country. Uh, but I will usually get a little congested. I will, uh, especially if I'm touring, you know, I'm, I'm on stage and I'll, I'll be performing for an hour plus almost every night. Uh, so my throat will get a little scratchy, but then I'll, I'll I will eventually develop a, 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 a very gross phlegmy cough around this time of year because, you know, the weather's changing, my sinuses are, are getting affected. Um, and recently, I mean, it's been, it's been nuts. Like it's, it's been hot, it's been cold, it got windy, it got rainy. I mean, we're, we're, it, it's just been like that pretty constantly the last couple weeks um and I know that has to do with the uh the hurricane that just that just happened that just happened that just passed through the, the, yeah it just miraculously appeared you guys uh we snapped our fingers and boom diggity do there was the hurricane <laughs> it just happened fucking idiot sometimes I sound like an idiot in these don't I uh <laughs> where it's just like you don't know how to say words But I'm keeping hydrated, as you can see. Sorry for the bottled water. Uh, I gotta get my jars in the car pretty soon. But uh, yeah, I'm doing way better. The cough is pretty much almost gone. I don't feel like you know how when you get sick, you can feel the phlegm in your chest. It's just like this heavy thing, and then like if you pay close enough attention, like you can hear. Like the the wheezing that's in your chest, like you get that sort of, you get that sort of feel. Um, that I mean, that was gone instantly by the end of Monday, uh, and then you know, yesterday was was a it was an okay day. Uh, so I, I I was you know back to back to normal. But uh, I do have two stories for you guys today. Uh, Hope you get, hopefully they'll, they'll be they'll be somewhat interesting. I'm working out of a, a, a new little little mini notebook here. Uh, so uh, the first one that th- this has been going around for a little while. This this is this is something I saw uh, last month, and it's been it's been sitting in my reading list for a bit. And I got a chance to to read it. To uh, a little piece by Lauren uh, Martin Check, I believe is is the the, the person. It's a medium article. Um, and she points out something that, uh, you know, a lot of my liberal friends get upset at me for, uh, for, for, for going after him, but, uh, points out something that Obama did recently on his wife's podcast, right? I mean, both of them are, are kind of responsible for saying, uh, these statements, but basically the, the Obamas, uh, were chastising young people for the lack of enthusiasm. 
young people are are not as enthusiastic about the Democratic Party, and uh, you know, you know, the Obamas feel really sh- they they feel like you, the young the kids the kids today with their fucking socialism and their wanting health care. You know, pull your pants up, and maybe then you'll get some health care, huh? How about that? How about how about you you uh, you, you quaff your hair? And start working from five for Pfizer, and then you'll get some health care, huh? How about that, you fu- you, you kids huh? out there, the youth in the streets? You you you're going out there, and the what do you think? Health care grows on trees? You 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 youths, you you get you get out there, and you fucking you wear a suit, and you put that corporate dick right in your mouth, and you suck hard. You suck on it like it's your favorite flavor of Jolly Ranchers. That's what you do. And then you will get some health care. Some sticky, sticky, gooey health care. That's what... Aren't you excited? That's Isn't that exciting? Where is the enthusiasm for that? Why are you, why are you not excited? Don't you want to be excited? Isn't that exciting? What a putz. What a putz that guy is. So, um, you know, here's the thing. I get, <laughs> I do, I do get attacked by liberals, uh, for criticizing Obama, uh, 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 probably more often than I probably should. And I, and it's always interesting to me is like the, the Democrats, like, you know, I get as a progressive and socialist, whatever. I mean, I am, I'm, I'm pretty much, I'm a socialist in terms of like what I believe in and stuff. And I think there's really not a fundamental understanding of what that term is in, uh, in the American zeitgeist. But anyway, uh, I, I mean, I get called like sensitive and shit, you know, but I, I, I can take criticisms of my work. Like, you know, I, almost every person I've dated has had some kind of critique of what I do and and I either have to listen and see if that critique is true and valid or if I don't believe that it's true and valid and there is a reason for me to, for, for me to be doing what I'm doing um, I know how to I know how to defend it I know how to you know make heads or tails of what what I'm talking about and why I'm doing what I'm doing important important little little thing there is to know why you're doing what you're doing right so but but these fucking democrats man is like they don't like they're the ones that are like too sensitive they're like the they, they're the ones that kind of are the reason why i think like the whole like crybaby liberal like liberal snowflake kind of thing is used as like a negative connotation because they just every time you say something about the democratic party every time you kind of go after their party uh, they're the ones that are like, they're like, but but why? But I mean, but the dem, but it's not Republicans, and it's just like, is it though? Isn't it though? Isn't it though? Especially when you criticize the Obamas, right? Like the Obamas have become this sort of, um, almost like this cult within the Democratic Party. They've become like these bigger sort of culty figures within the Democratic Party. Um, and it's, it's really weird and creepy and I kind of hate it. Uh, but you know, you can't say anything about them because he was the first black president. So everything he did was, was glazed over with this, like, oh, we did it. Kumbaya kind of like, and it's like, yeah, that's, I mean, it's really great that we finally got uh, a black president, you know, in like, uh, close to 300 years after this country was made and, uh, 40 years after, 40 or 50 years after, you know, the civil rights era, uh, I mean, in my opinion, fucking too long, but this guy turned out to be like every fucking neoliberal corporate chill. He was basically like a, he basically ruled the country like Reagan, you know, and it was like, he even, he even has been quoted to say that if if this was the '80s, he would have probably voted for Ronald Reagan, based on his belief systems, right? So it's you know, I'm not. I don't. I never want to try to diminish 
racial tension in this country because it's real and boy fucking howdy as an Indian person do I know it's real but it it, it, it kind of um, I think it, it, it's been uh, an exploited argument uh, to, to justify a lot of neoliberal policies and class warfare uh, but to liberals the, you know this cult like figure that he's kind of become the, it, it's because they associate him with normalcy in this country, and Lauren Lauren Martinjack points this out in the in the article. It's it's a it's a return to normalcy. That's so. Anytime he shows up, it's just like oh what? It's it's just like when things were amazing. Do you guys remember when things were awesome and we didn't have to like pay attention to anything because the black man was in office and everything he did is probably glittered with black gold and everything's fine and and nothing you can ever do is wrong you guys remember you guys remember when i didn't have to pay attention to anything and i could just watch cat videos and masturbate all day and just, oh and that's what they want to go back to you know like it's exhausting to pay attention to politics at at, at that level but that but everything in your life is political and you should be paying attention to to politics on on almost uh, any and every level um and it, I, it's so weird that as I'm saying this statement, uh, the lighting has changed. I'm driving underneath the tunnel and the a person in front of me has their brake lights on and it kind of gives me a, a demonic glow to say that everything is political in your life and you should give a shit. Uh, it's kind of, kind of a weird weird time for the, for the red ominous lightning. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be complacent. Right, I think complacency was normal. Um, not giving a shit and being like, "Bad Democrats are good, Republicans are bad," or vice versa. Is like that's not that's that was normal, and it and it brought us to this point. And we shouldn't be trying to go back to that. At no point should we be trying to go back to something that brought us to a more catastrophic point. It's like when people are like, I'd like to time travel back to high school. I'd do things so differently. And it's like, no, you fucking wouldn't. If that's the source point of all your problems, why go back to the fucking source point? Look, and that is a lesson that I've had to learn the hard way in certain aspects of my life. As a divorced man, I can tell you that going back to the same problem over and over again... And it's, it's not going to get... you got to move forward to so, to do something different and do something better. But the conservatives look at this guy, uh, this 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 Obama cult figure, uh, with visceral hatred. That's They just hate him uh, for everything. He represents this um, anti-American, like, pro-social... And, and I think, you know, I think our rhetoric towards socialism in this country really uh, stemmed from... The the, uh, the the way that w- racists look at Obama uh, as a socialist. And it's like, that, that guy's not socialist fucking at all. At all, that guy's not socialist. Not even fucking close. Boy, if he was socialist, I would have the enthusiasm that, that he claims I lack. Uh, so... This is why people get mad when people criticize Obama is because it's either normalcy or they or they praise you because you're racist. And it's like, no, I'm criticizing Obama because of his policies, what he stood for, what his beliefs are and how he led the country. And that's that's why he he ta- he talked a big game about hope and change, hope and change, hope and change and then became the same corporate bullshit president that every other fucking person before him was. And now, and now he's fucking endorsing and shilling for a candidate that's literally said fundamentally nothing will change. Other than them saying some nice things, the Democrats have come out and made a stance by declining Medicare for All from their platform and by putting up a candidate that is boring as fuck, just as immature as Donald Trump, and has literally said fundamentally nothing will change. So it's just you know, I don't know. I I, I, I find it I find it 
harder and harder to sit there and justify anything about the Democratic Party, like on a daily basis <laughs> at this point. Like, these fucking liberals just go after lefties all the time. Anybody that doesn't that doesn't fucking kiss ass to the Democratic Party. And don't get me wrong, I, I actually on the conservatives just as much. The, the the right wing has done me no favors. And and boy howdy are there plenty of videos where I'm going after the right wing. So this statement was made in Michelle Obama's podcast. He was on the first episode. I don't know how many fucking episodes there are. By the way, can can politicians stop fucking having podcasts? Like go go your job as a politician is to legislate is to create legislation on behalf of the people. You're not fucking doing that. Stop making podcasts. I'm a comedian. I can make a podcast about whatever I fucking feel like because that's like my job. But you're a fucking politician. Can you can you go legislate? Can you be a legislator? It's because of shit like this is why politicians get a bad name. It's cuz they do these fucking empty gestural things of like I'm going to say some things that sound really smart on a podcast. And I'm and I'm you know I'm going to use some big words and arbitrary pauses and it makes it sound like I'm very pensive and that's good. That's all I need to do. Money please. Like and it's just like fuck off. Anyway, on the Michelle Obama podcast, he was their her, her first guest obviously. Uh they're they're you know, obviously he's going to be the first guest on her on her podcast. And he comes out. Well, she makes some statement. She makes a statement first. This is this is what I read, I, I you know, in, in, in the uh, article here is she makes a statement uh, about how she's excited about what young people are doing around the world, around the country. And, and then she goes on to start making a statement about how cynical we are. And that we care about, we care more about our cereal choices. And it's, which is like, that's not even fucking true anymore. And then Obama goes on to make some statement about how, uh, you know, we've become very cynical about, about government as a, as, as a generation. Um, and, uh, and, and we only point out. Uh, we only point out uh, fallacies in the government when, when things aren't working. And it's like, yeah, fucking no shit, bro. Fucking no shit we're going to point out. Fallacies when things are broken. That's when you point them out. You don't point out things are broken like when everything is fine. My car is running pretty darn good right now. But I'm not, like, bitching about the fact that I got an oil change or had to get the brakes changed six months ago. What a moronic statement to make. And the system is broken. Everybody has a reason to be cynical about the government right now. Everybody everybody should, should be... has the right to have less enthusiasm. I posted something, uh, uh, you know, I, I post my tweets on Instagram um, and I posted some, I can't even remember exactly what the tweet was, uh, but, boy, I don't know if you guys could hear that or not, but that biker was very loud on his on his bike there. But, you know, I, I basically posted something along the lines of like, I'm not, about, about my lack of enthusiasm for this election. And somebody just, you know, replied and just said, you might not be excited, but it's your civic duty to do it. And it's like, yeah, it's my civic duty to also not do it in protest. If I really feel like the two candidates that are, that essentially are cherry picked by the corporations that run our elections are, are not candidates that represent my views, then I don't have to choose any of them. And what sucks is this current election system, the, 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 election system that we are under is a duopoly. Is it, I mean, really, it's a corporate monopoly. It's a corporate oligarchy. But it pretends to be a duopoly. It pretends to have two sides. It's two sides of the same coin, but it pretends to have two sides. Which means even if I wanted to pick somebody different, 
Even even if these two corporate parties pick their candidates and I don't like them and I want to pick somebody different, I want to pick somebody better, I can't fucking do it. Because there ain't nobody else that can. Because I might live in a state where the Green Party isn't allowed to be on the ballot. I might live in a state where the Libertarians aren't allowed to be on the ballot. Socialists aren't allowed to be on the ballot. So what the fuck am I getting excited over this election system for? There is nothing to get excited about. As as a first time voter, as somebody that's waited 23 fucking years to to have this right, I can get I can give a shit about these two candidates. Both of these candidates don't give a shit about any of the things that that I'm passionate about. They don't care about human rights. They don't care about equality. They don't care about the working class. They are neoliberal and neoconservative shills for the corporation, pumping uh, pumping a war economy, killing people that look like me. I have no interest in voting for either of these fucking people. So you want to talk about cynicism? We have every motherfucking right to be cynical. We have every right to be cynical. There's praise amongst the Democratic Party for squashing the Bernie campaign. Obama led the final blow. They all, uh, all, all of the candidates back in March... I don't know if you remember. Uh, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Uh, m- maybe you're one of these people that has the, the, the fucking memory of a gnat because that's where our society now, apparently. Uh, is we just, we, we forget things at like on a, a minutely fucking basis because something new and shiny popped up or Trump tweeted something that we have to fucking pay attention to more than it, like anything else. But... They all dropped. I mean, I, like, it, like within seventy-two hours, every single political candidate dropped and endorsed Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, fucking, uh, what is that skateboard guy from Texas? His name, O'Rourke, Robert O'Rourke. Yeah, I won't call Beto. Fuck that shit. It's a ploy. Abby Martin talked about how uh, she revealed how that's like a ploy to make him more. Uh, likable to to, to, to to Latinos fucking asshole but uh, Robert O'Rourke endorsed Biden Pete Buttigieg Elizabeth Warren Amy Klobuchar they all fucking dropped one by one by one and then once this pandemic hit once this pandemic started uh, you know Tulsi Gabbard, who I was very excited about, she fucking endorsed the guy. She's like, "What the fuck, right?" And then, and then the final blow of Bernie Sanders. And you know, Bernie wants to be liked by the Democrats. He does, and I get that there's an argument to be made of like, "Oh, well, he has to play the game." Well, why is why is something that very much affects our everyday life a game? Why is it being controlled by these fucking sociopaths? Why are genuine people that actually don't look at it as a game being forced to participate in it like it's a fucking game? But, you know, he's been... He's been siding with the Democrats and and kind of giving them a pass and all this other shit, right? Right? And I've been pretty disappointed in it. But Obama was, I mean, the final blow to the head. I mean, he basically came out and he was like, look, if if it looks like Bernie Sanders is going to run away with it, we are going to fucking stop him. Like, he came out and said that he was going to stop Bernie Sanders. The candidate that, that, that had a large grassroots movement that stood for the people that young people were actually fucking excited about. I wanted to fucking vote for the guy. I couldn't. Took that chance away from me. And then now he's just turned into a huge disappointment anyway. So... 
So, you cast the final blow to one of the most energetic politicians that young people actually wanted to vote for, and then you chastise young people for not being excited about the boring fucking asshole you you have endorsed. I am 100% cynical about electoral politics. I, re- I, re- I really am. I, you know, there's a lot of friends of, of mine that, that don't want me to be, that, that kind of look at it as, this is, this is our, our uh, you know, the, 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 gl- the glory, the, the, the fucking light at the end of the tunnel is, is the election. And it's like, no, it's not. It, it, it is a tool in the tool belt of, uh, 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 of activism and driving change, yes. Having better candidates, but you uh, having better candidates is important, but also changing the system is important. So I'm jaded and cynical as fuck about the uh, electoral system. What gives me hope is things like the People's Convention, the People's the Movement for a People's Party, folks like, you know, Nick Brana, uh, and people that are on the ground doing things you know the, <clears throat> the 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 daily protests give me give give me a lot of hope i'm not cynical about that there has been so many protests across this country since the end of may that they're like actually changing shit i'm going to talk about one of those in just a little bit it None, none of this stuff just happens because politicians are like, well, this seems like the right thing to do. They never fucking do that. It happens because there, there's kids on the streets fighting for it. There, there are comedians fucking amplifying that shit. Comedians that are talking about it. Independent journalists that are addressing it, that are getting the stories out there to the people. That's that's what I'm excited about. The strikes, very excited about the strikes. There's there have been tons and tons of labor strikes all across the country since March, and he, I mean even before that. So excited about that shit. It's the resurgence of the labor movement. But once again. You know, this is the stuff that people are excited about. This is the stuff that drives change. It's what give pe- gives people hope. It's what Obama ran on, hope and change. So, for, I mean, for all intents and purposes, this guy should be all on board. This is, this is on brand for the dude. This is on fucking brand for the dude. But he doesn't, right? I mean, o- Obama squashed the NBA strikes. He talked to LeBron. He was like, listen, we got to stop this. Okay. Play some basketball. Play some basketball. That's a very bad Obama impression. I understand. I know that. That's a bad Obama impression. But remember when Laura Ingram did that shit? I don't mention this on Monday, but I want to mention it again. But remember when Laura Ingram did that shit? Shut up and dribble. I believe is what she said. This is Obama's version of that. But no. But, but look, liberals are not going to get upset about that shit because. Again, there's a cult-like fandom surrounding Barack Obama, so he can't do anything wrong ever. He's their he is their shining black knight. That's what he is. That's what he all. That's what he's always gonna be. He doesn't fucking stand for the labor movement. He doesn't stand for 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 equality and for justice. I mean, police brutality was happening underneath his administration. We had a, we had huge demonstrations in Ferguson. Huge demonstrations for Eric Garner. What happened there? Fucking nothing. This guy takes everything that we're excited about and then fucking kills it. He's a, he's the fun killer. He's the fucking fun killer. He kills everything people get excited about and then pushes the status quo. Pushes the same old, same old. And then he gets shitty... When we don't like his stupid same old, same old. And we're like, this doesn't work. And he's like, yeah, but it will though. It will if you get really excited about it. And it's like, no. It won't. 
It never has. We tried it before. And we were excited about it before. Fuck that shit, man. I, I, we, we shouldn't be... We shouldn't be holding up these fucking people on a pedestal. And that goes for Bernie and Tulsi too, by the way. It, it, I don't, and, Jude, and all the other candidates that we, that we like adore, like these guys are all mascots. That's all they are. They're mascots to an idea at best, at best, right? Obama was a mascot for hope and change. And then he was just like, nope, I'm now a mascot for corporations. Look at all these decals on my costume. That's what they all become. Like, Bernie Sanders is a mascot for for Medicare for All and all of the big Democratic Socialist ideologies that we all believe in, but then he just goes and lines up with the fucking Democratic Party anyway, who is the party with a bunch of fucking corporate stickers all over their fucking suits. He's like, I'm not going to wear this. I'm not going to wear the stickers. I'm not going to, but Donald Trump, he's got to go, but these guys, I'm going to, even though they fuck me over, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. It's fine. Just, well, bad, 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 bad. Fuck you, dude. Chris had just talked about it in Activism Munich, and I and I threw the clip into one of my videos about electoral politics. Haven't checked that out. Go check it out on the channel. Um, but he basically pointed out how Shama Savant called him out as to why he won't run on a third party or why he won't run on a uh, you know some some kind of a, di- a different um, uh, outside the Democratic Party. And Sanders basically said. Well, he doesn't want to do it because he doesn't want to be Ralph Nader. He doesn't want to be a pariah. He wants to be liked by the Democratic Party. I mean, how much abuse does one dude fucking need to take from this party? It's just like, like Bernie's just kind of, you know, I love the dude, but he's just sitting there going, thank you, may I have another over and over again. It's just like, man, you gotta, you gotta get out of this abusive relationship you have with the Democratic Party. They're not good for you. That's that's kind of what it feels like. It feels like Bernie's in an abusive relationship with the Democratic Party. I mean, we all are. We're all in an abusive relationship with the with with this corporate duopoly, with this oligarchy that we're in. What is so exciting about this? <laughs> and you know what the sad part is? I've asked a bunch of people to like give me like liberals and Democrats that fucking chastise me for going after the going after the the party and I go okay well give me give me a reason you 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 know what I stand for if you if you've watched my videos if you've kept up with my content then you know what I stand for you know what issues are important to me you know what ideologies I stand by why should I vote for the democratic party which one of these ideologies did they stand by and have actually legislated towards they've actually put and fought within Congress against Republican opposition instead of just turning over and showing their belly. Which which one? What should I be excited about within the Democratic Party? And you know what the sad part is? They can't fucking give me an answer. They've never been able to give me an answer. And I keep asking people, right? I'm just like, well, give me something to vote for. That's my qualification. You know what I believe in. Tell me what. Tell me what I'm voting for. When I, when, if I, if I, if I choose to vote for Joe Biden, what am I voting for? What's exciting about Joe Biden? Where's the enthusiasm for Joe Biden? What's up? And they got fucking nothing. Not one. I'm. I've months now. Months now. I've been asking. Anytime I get fucking hit by the. By, by uh, Democratic Party fucking staunch Democrats and liberals that are that are just like Trump 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 more of the same. I do have a, a, a good news, uh, well, a somewhat good news story, good, good, good news on the way kind of story. Uh, let's call it. Virginia is uh, is on its way to get rid of uh, getting rid of qualified immunity. Uh, kind of a big deal. If you don't know what qualified immunity is, I did I did address that in a, in a dispatch, uh, maybe a month or two ago. 
uh, kind of go, going into a little bit of the details of qualified immunity. And basically, qualified immunity is uh, is this. It means that cops can't be uh, tried in a, in a civil rights lawsuit, uh, and they have uh, sovereign immunity, uh, you know, for, for doing their job. They get to, essentially, if they kill somebody, uh, and they can't go to trial for it. They get qualified immunity. And the Supreme Court, with liberal and, and conservative judges, have all voted for this. And they've let go of a bunch of brutal cops, put them back on the street, because of qualified immunity. So even I mean even if you if you sit here sit there and tell me that I need to you know vote for Biden because Trump bad Trump 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 bad 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 Trump 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 um, is there is is Joe Biden going to put somebody on uh, on this uh, Supreme Court that is going to get rid of qualified immunity? Fucking probably not. More of the same. Nothing's fundamentally going to change. But Virginia is uh, is on its way to get rid of it. Um, the, there's a, a Democrat named Jeff Bourne. He wrote up a bill that uh, essentially, I think he's he's trying to uh, adapt or circumvent the, the the legal system, and it basically denies uh, police officers that are that are called into trial qualified immunity. That, that can't be a defense that, that, that can be used, uh, especially when it involves murder, especially when it involves uh, violence, brutality, and, and you know basically all the shit that we've been seeing cops are doing to uh, uh, people of color and, and protesters across this country. So, uh, well, good news. It's good news. Uh, I believe if I'm remembering the number, I forgot to note the number down, but it's 12 to 8. Is what is is what it went through. So it's now got to go through the House, and it's got to go through the Virginia Senate, uh, and and then they will, you know, it'll it, it it'll be done. It'll be a done deal. Um, so I hope that that happens. Uh, and, and there is some complications in terms of qualified immunity, right? So one of the things that this article talked about was, um, well. The, the legislation wants to make sure that we're upholding the Constitution. So if cops are brutalizing protesters, if cops are brutalizing you based on the color of your skin, uh, that is a constitutional violation. Especially the protest thing. It's a, it's a constitutional violation. You're going after somebody's right to protest. And, uh, yeah. Uh, where this really comes from is the Ku Klux Klan Act of 1871 sounds terrible I know because when I read it I was like why didn't you just change the name of the fucking why does why did you keep it this way uh but ironically despite the name of the fucking legislation what a terrible dumb fucking name for the for I mean that's like if you had a cola company if you had like a soda pop company and you just and you just called it diabetes to drink and it's like, okay, that's a bad... No one's buying this. No one's going to care. That's a bad idea. And, and like, your logo is just like a dying pancreas. Like... Anyway, uh, it's stated that the deprivation of rights, privileges, or immunity uh, shall basically been, uh, be, be uh, liable to... Uh, liable to party injured in an action by the law. Basically saying, like, if, if somebody takes away your rights, uh, the person that did that is going to get in trouble for doing it. They, they can't take away your, your rights. Those are, those are granted to you by the Constitution. Um, and it was against the KKK, not for the KKK, even though it really sounds like it's for the KKK. This was sort of like, this is sort of like inching at the civil rights because there was still a battle going on for the 14th Amendment. Um, the, at that point and so they, black people still didn't have like civil rights they were still getting brutalized and, and their rights weren't being recognized uh, even by the courts to the point where like they they were being represented by federal troops like federal troops had to 
be called in to ensure that, like, slavery was going to actually end. Like, plantation owners would would not continue to fucking have slaves. Like, that's that's how crazy it got. So, you know, we finally get to the Civil Rights era in 1967 with the Civil Rights Act. And that is, I mean, that's basically civil rights as law. But even then we're not really, give, because, because the counter to that is, is something like qualified immunity. So now that this is going to be denied, it, it sort of brings civil rights back to the forefront. Rather than this bullshit law and order, you know, cops are above the law kind of shit. Like, it's not a Steven Seagal movie. Like, fuck off. You, you represent the law that you are a part of. You are not above the law. Clear distinction needs to be made there by law enforcement. Now, there are opponents of this bill um, that address that, you know, we're, we're, they're going to face problems with this because what if this, this thing gets in the way of cops doing their job? Which is, I mean, you know, so let's, def- what, what, the, what is their job? Their, their job should be, should be to protect and serve the community. That's what it should be. Protect and serve the citizens of this country, but it, is, but it is not. They are there to protect the stuff of rich people and serve said rich people. That's what they're there for. That's, that's what they've always been there for. You know, the, 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 these guys come from defunct fucking like slave patrol vigilante type people. They're, they're, they're not here to protect and serve us. It's not what the cops were ever intended to do. Again, talked about, I, I talked, I did a big in-depth video about the his, where the history of policing comes from, um, and how the, how the safe patrols evolved, uh, into modern policing. So it's not like their their job is not to protect and serve the people. So this is not what what is this going to get in the way of them getting in the fucking beating a protester? Good. I hope it gets in the way of that because we should completely rethink what the job of a police officer actually is. The, 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 the guy also points out that, uh, oh, what if they're fired for racism? What if they're for, oh, what, what, what if? Good. I fucking hope so. If you're a police officer and you're racist, then you have bias. You have implicit bias, which means that you're going to look at black people and brown people as more of criminals. And for brown people, it might be terrorists. So you're going to be even more aggressive towards them because your racist brain tells you that you're in danger. It's like, well, it's more complicated when, when you know, uh, cops are fired over racism. Fucking what? It shouldn't be. If Kinko's can figure it out, I feel like you guys should be able to figure it out no problem. Somebody's racist at Kinko's, you know, and gets fired. Good on Kinko's. But if somebody's racist as a police officer, they're, they're like, well, he's a good officer, you know, he does his job. That's all he was doing, he was doing his job. Was his job to racially profile people of color and attack and brutalize them? Was that his job? Because it fucking shouldn't be. This is good. I, I you know, I, I do hope that uh, they 
uh, deny qualified immunity, they revoke it, uh, and and then it and then it makes itself, you know, goes through on on a federal level too. I want it to go on a um, on a federal level. I'd like to see this uh, be be put into place on a federal level. Um, so I'm going to try to keep a close eye on the story and and. Uh, uh, come back with updates when there are updates with this. So uh, stay tuned on 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 the old the old channel for for all these uh, for all these fun updates. Uh, I think that's all I got for you guys today. Wrapping things up. Um, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for uh, for the people that have subscribed. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, you're awesome. And for the people that are thinking about subscribing, what are you waiting for? I can do it. Just do it. Uh, lots of cool stuff coming up. Um, all of the, all of my updates, all of the posts, all of the information that you want to know about me, including past videos, uh, podcasts, stand-up comedy albums, are all available on my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Um, if you want to be a part of the live virtual audience to my show, Citizen Revolution, uh, that happens three Fridays out of the month at 9 p.m. Eastern and 6 p.m. Pacific. Uh, you can grab your tickets right now directly off my website, or you can go to krishmohanhaha.ticketleap.com. It's krishmohanhaha.ticketleap.com. All of the uh, show dates are available there. It's a, it's a brand new show uh, each week. Uh, and it's a it's it's sort of a multimedia virtual stand up comedy commentary show. So if you like the content of this video, then you're probably gonna like that show. Uh, so grab your tickets; they're only five bucks. That gets you a confirmation, and then an hour before the show, I send you a uh, a link to uh, to the uh, to the virtual theater, and then you, the, which is over Zoom. So you're going to need to download Zoom. Uh, and then you just sit back and, and relax and enjoy the show with your friends. And, of course, BYOB, you're, you're at your own house. So, you know, if you want to drink, you can drink. If you don't want to drink, you don't have to drink. Whatever you want to do. Uh, but this week we're talking about blue leaks. We're talking about uh, uh, police surveillance and uh, the, their view on protesters and Antifa and, uh, their connection to white supremacy. So, again, if you liked a lot of the stuff that we talked about in this video, you're probably going to like uh, that show a lot. So, uh, I hope you guys can make it. Uh, once again, the ticket website is krishmohanhaha.ticketleap.com. And, uh, again, all of this stuff, including the ticket links, can be found directly on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. All right, everybody. This is the destination. Uh, I appreciate you guys hanging out. appreciate you guys listening. And uh, we'll see you again real soon. Bye.